The first card you have you passed is uh, the Four of Swords. So yeah, obviously this is the card of resting, thinking, contemplating a lot of things. It can be about enlightenment as well. And I think you were very, very tired. Um, not physically, but I think your head was very, very tired at this time. And I think this is because you're actually tired of a situation you're in uh, with someone. Um, and I think this is a love situation. Um, and what I'm seeing here is that your partner, or whoever this is, um, they just weren't making you feel valued. That's what I'm seeing. And that's how you were feeling, unvalued. Um, because you look at, if you look at this man or this statue um, on this card, he's golden. And the rest of the card's just really, really dull. It's kind of some grey brown colour. But he is golden. So, um, you know, apart from the window. So, um, you know, of course, gold is super, super high value. So this is showing you that you're golden, you're valuable, you're worth more than the way this person was making you feel. And I think you know that. Um, I think there are a few incidents that happened that got you to this point. You know, I think you really, really put up with a lot more than you should have for a lot longer than you should have. But I think you did try to talk to them. Um, and then I think there was one last final thing that might have happened and it just made you say, no, I just want to be by myself. That's it. Enough of this. I'm just going to go and be by myself. Um, I don't think you were physically by yourself. I think you might have actually still been around them. But this was your mindset at this time. It was like your mind just switched off and it said, no, enough. I can't bear this. I, I just can't anymore. So... You know, you were getting this distance, um, whether it was in your mind or whatever, but this is what you needed to do. And, um, you know, this was going around in your head still, even though you're kind of getting this kind of thinking time, this resting time, it was still going around in your head, of course. And um, also, you know, it was hanging above your head like these swords. And what was hanging above your head, I think, was a decision. You knew you had to make a decision one way or the other, one way or the other, about this person, um, at some time, at some point in time, you couldn't keep on going the way you were with the way things were going. And I think this was actually the beginning of you starting to wake up, um, because yeah, this is this can be about awakening. Um, this card as well with the stained glass window. So. Uh, yeah, I think this was you starting to wake up, starting to see your own value, realising you deserved a lot better. And I think you were right. Absolutely, you were right. Um, you know, so yeah, this was a time of you just taking a lot of things in and just trying to sort a lot of things out in your head. So the next card you have your past is the Two of Cups. So yeah, this card, I mean, obviously it's usually a love card or it can be a friendship card. Um, it can be about healing as well. Sometimes it's, it's you know, it's a complex card. It can be about a lot of different things. I am seeing some healing in this card. Um, I'm not seeing this connection being over yet. I think it's still, there's still some love there. There's still some passion there. Um, you know, I think... But I just think your mind had gone to a completely different place uh, to where it was. And um, even though I think deep down you still had love for them, you just needed that time, you needed that thinking space away from that whole situation. And uh, you have argued a few times before, I think, quite a few times, but this time it felt quite different. That's what I'm seeing. It was feeling different to you. And I think that frightened you as well because you were a little bit like, oh, it feels different this time. Does that mean it's over? And so that was one of the things you had to kind of sort through in your head. Um, and I don't know if they understood how serious this was for you. I don't think they did. Um, I think they might have even felt that this was just like, you know, a small hump in the road or something and you'd be able to just get over it after a while. Um, 
I think this person still had hope for this and they thought, oh, they'll get over it. You know, if you look at this card, the man has red roses in a wreath around his head. So this can be that he still has love on his mind um, or uh, they still want to manifest something more with you. They don't think it's over. Um, so, yeah, I agree with them, actually. <laughs> I think there's something, there was still something that could be salvaged here. Um, there was still a connection. I think you both still had passion for each other. But uh, what there wasn't anymore was stability, um, in your mind anyway. Um, you know, your home or your stability, stability was being pushed into the distance, like this house. You see this house, is, there's a tiny house and it's behind them up on a hill and it's kind of been pushed into the distance because a home represents stability. So I think you felt that, yes, you still had some love for them. Yes, you were angry that you weren't being valued or respected. And because of that, the stability was pushed into the background. Um, and that's how you saw that. And I don't think they realised that, or maybe they just didn't want to face the seriousness of how this situation was and what you were feeling. And I think even though this has got this had gotten to a pretty bad stage at this time, I think you were still open to talking. There was still something between you. And I think there still is now. Um, you know, I think, but to be able to salvage anything at all, I think a lot would have to change because I think even now, uh, they weren't taking this all that seriously. They're like, oh, they'll be over this soon. It's just a little argument and we'll all be back to normal. And it wasn't like this. This felt different for you. It was like your whole stability had been pushed away. Um, so that's what I'm seeing in that card. Um, so the last card you have for your past is the Hermit. So yeah, again, the same kind of thing. Quiet contemplation. Uh, deep thinking, you're in your head, you're doing a lot of soul searching about this situation. Now, you know, I think you know your sense of value primarily comes from you, not from someone else. But also, you know, if you are with someone, if you're in a relationship with someone, uh, your partner has to see the value in you as well for all of this to work properly. And so, yeah, you are still kind of by yourself thinking, contemplating. I think you probably were physically still around them. Um, you weren't, you know, you're by yourself in your head. Um, I think your head was in a completely different place than it was before. And it was definitely in a different place than, than their head was at this time. So, you know, I think you are probably a deeper thinker than they are generally. Um, I'm not saying that to put them down. Um, I'm not doing that at all. It's, uh, I think you look at deeper meanings behind a lot of things. And I think that can have you second guessing yourself sometimes. Um, but again, you know, I'm seeing them, you know, just wanting all of this to go back to normal, maybe just going back to the way everything was before. And so I think if you do talk, which I think you will at some stage, um, you know, it's going to take a lot, I think, for them to be able to understand you properly. So you're going to have a, a lot to work through um, uh, if and when you do have um, this talk and you get back together again and you kind of sort through this with them. Um, so the first card you have your present uh, is the Knight of Pentacles. No matter what you think or say, I think you do really still love this person on some level. I'm not seeing you totally wanting to let this go. Um, there is still love there, if this is all resonating with you. Um, but this is, again, this is reflecting what was in the Four of Swords. Um, this is how this person should be seeing you as golden. Again, once again. Look at the way this um, coin is lighting up the whole sky. It lights up the whole world for this night to the point where he doesn't know what to do. He's not moving. He's not doing anything. It's almost like he's, you know, paralyzed with the glow of this beautiful coin. It's absolutely amazing. So, you know, you don't want them to be, to be paralyzed and kind of sitting there staring at you all day. Well, I'd like someone to do that, but it won't happen. But anyway, you don't want that. You just want to be valued. That's all you want is to be valued. And that's absolutely perfectly 
understandable. Everyone wants to be valued and everyone needs to be valued, especially in a relationship. So again, this is what this is showing me. There's a big difference in your personalities. So when I said you're a deeper thinker, um, that wasn't, I wasn't talking about anyone's intelligence. Um, I wasn't saying that again. Um, I just think, okay, I'll tell you what I'm seeing. They're more about purpose. I'll try and explain this. Um, so, okay, so if someone asked you what kind of book you both wanted to read, they'd be more interested in learning something for a set purpose. So studying for an exam, learning how to do something or fix something or get something or learn how to kind of do something for a purpose. There's something at the end of it for them. Whereas you'd be happy just to learn for the sake of it. You like to find, you know, you just find random things interesting. You might be going, oh, that's an interesting bird over there. Let's read about that. Oh, that's, oh, that's interesting. What's that about? And then you just start reading it because you just like to explore things. Um, they're not like that. There has to be a purpose for what they're doing. So, you know, looking deeper into things just doesn't serve a purpose for them. That's what I'm seeing in that. I'm just trying to kind of articulate all of this for you so you understand. I hope that helps you. Um, and I hope, I hope that kind of helps you um, and it kind of gives you an insight into how to approach them and how to talk through this. Um, if that's what you decide to do, because there needs to be a purpose at the end of the talk. You can't just go, oh, I feel like this and I felt like this and they felt like this. And they're like, what, what is the point in this? Where is this going? Why are we having this conversation? What is the result that you want? So I think you've got to keep that in mind when you talk to them. And I think that's the only way you're going to come um, you know, you're going to meet in the middle on this. I really hope that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense to you, um, just ask me in the comments and I'll try and explain that a bit more to you. Um, so the next card you have here present is the Four of Wands. Again, there's love here. There is love here. Look at this card. You both feel this. But the problem is you communicate that in totally different ways, I think. So hopefully what I was saying to you um, just then might help you to understand their way of communicating. So hopefully that'll help. Um, okay, so the other thing I'm seeing here is that um, something might be about to take off for you. Now, I think this is something about career, business, something like that. Um, and yeah, obviously this is a very, very positive card. I think this is probably a warning for you as well. Now, there's something you want to do, something you want to get off the ground and might be just at the early stages of this because I'm seeing you doing research, working out how to do things. I think you also might be creating a space for yourself because I'm seeing, you know, maybe you uh, carrying things into a room and making a desk or a space, might be a home office, might be a studio if it's something creative or it might just be a space in a corner of a room. But I think you're carving out a space for yourself, moving things around to do that. Now, I think you might be feeling as if you're not ready to actually launch anything properly yet. You don't feel ready to start anything big with this yet. Um, I, I'm seeing here that you are actually. You don't think you are, but you are. Um, I think you might actually be procrastinating a bit because uh, you are doing a lot of analysing, but you can only do so much analysing before you start. You have to start at some time. And this has the potential to be successful. This is 11-11. You know, the red arrows pointing up to the sky, celebrations, all of that kind of thing. It's a lot closer to you than you think. And I think you really need to start this thing. You need you need to start something real with this, not analysing, not researching, not thinking, not gazing at the stars, doing something, doing something concrete. Um, so launch something, start something. Don't be stuck in the research stage. You can stay in that stage forever, thinking that you're actually doing something, but you're actually not doing anything real. 
Um, again, I don't want to boss you around. I re I'm doing that a lot in these readings lately and I don't mean to. I just don't want you to miss out on this. Um, the time for doing this is now. The gates are opened now. Um, I'm not saying you won't be able to do this in the future. You will. But this card showing me that this is the right time for you to start doing this right now. Um, I know you're probably preoccupied with this love situation, if that's resonating with you. Um, but this might be a really good thing to help you take your mind off that as well, if that's um, troubling you as well. So this is all a really good thing. Please start this. The last card you have your present is the Four of Pentacles. So yeah, um, I think for this thing, for this uh, thing that you that you should be starting in the Four of Wands, um, I think you might have to spend some money on some things. Um, I'm not saying you need to go and spend a fortune on things, but I think um, there is something crucial that you might be skimping on. Uh, maybe you're trying to make do with what you have. Um, and that's fine. I do that all the time. But I think this is about your mindset around this thing. Um, and it's similar to what I was seeing in the Four of Wands. It's like you don't quite feel ready. You feel a bit nervous to start. You're afraid to commit totally to this. And your fear of commitment to this can come out in not wanting to invest in this thing. So I'm telling you to invest in this. Really put your money where your mouth is. Um, you know, if you can, of course, I don't want to tell people to spend money on things if they can't do that. But if you can, please invest in whatever this is, or at least start seriously saving toward this. Um, I keep on getting this feeling of urgency around this and that you could be doing more, more about this on a real level, on a more tangible level than you're doing now. So, um, yeah, so please do something. Um, I won't say any more about that. So the first card you have for your future is the Six of Wands. Okay, so I wasn't going to say any more about that, but, you know, this is the victory card. Please start now. You know, you have the victory card. You have the Four of Wands, and I can see you have the Magician as well. You can do this, and you're supposed to be doing this. Please try not to fear this. Um, it might be, okay, it might be that, because I'm seeing you're fearing this, you're fearing going ahead with this, and also you put up with... Um, being undervalued or feeling undervalued in this relationship for a long time. I mean, you're not now, you're not putting up with it now from what I'm seeing, but you were putting up with it for a lot longer than you should have been. So this is showing me that you're sitting putting up with things and then you're sitting waiting, thinking you're not really ready to do this and you're not good enough and you can't do this and all of that. So that's showing me that maybe there's something in your background where maybe you were told you can't do this, you're not good enough, something like that. You might have been put down in the past. Now, if this is right, if this is the case, um, anyone who puts you down like that, and I'm not talking about constructive criticism, which is fine, and that's what I'm giving you now, hopefully. Um, I'm talking about unthinking, destructive criticism. Now, any criticism like that that's destructive usually comes from someone who feels as if they're below you in some way. Whether they are or not, that's how they feel when they're giving you this horrible, destructive criticism. Now, because they feel like that, they want to make you feel like that and they want to make you drag, they want to drag you down with them. That's what I'm trying to say. So if this is all resonating, whoever said these things to you probably isn't even around you right now. So if they're not around you now, if they're not around your body, 
don't give them an invitation into your head. Your head's an exclusive club. Only let the best in there, not the rubbish. So yeah, I'm sorry, I won't say that anymore. I get very passionate about these things. I, and I've had people say, you're too bossy, you're too bossy. You never used to be like this. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be like this. I just really feel the urgency around this thing that you should be doing. It's going to lift your confidence if you do this. Please do it. And um, yeah, just make a start on this. I'm sorry, I won't say any more about that because I'm really turning into a horrible person. So the next card you have for your future is the Empress. So here's a lovely, um, peaceful lady. She would never act like this. So um, yeah, so yeah, I'm just looking, I'm looking at the Empress and I'm looking across and the Four of Wands is next to the Empress as well. So and the Four of Wands can be about, also, it can be about a lot of things, but it can also be about family, home, visiting family, being welcomed back into the home. So, um, you know, or, or it can be, you know, wherever, wherever you feel relaxed and at home. And the Empress is obviously a mother figure. So I think you might be visiting family or some family members might be visiting you at this time. I'm not seeing a lot of people, just a couple of people might be, you know, it's probably women. And uh, I don't actually think these people directly understand or completely understand all the problems and exactly what you're going through. But, um, you know, so I'm not seeing you totally opening up to them 100%, but um, they do care about you, these people. And I think just being in an atmosphere where you know you're cared for unconditionally, even if it doesn't come out in exactly the right way or the right words, this is going to help you to just feel a bit better in yourself, feel a bit more comfortable in yourself, and just feel a bit more cared for, which is what you need at this time. You need to be cared for. You need to feel loved. You need to feel valued in other ways. You need to have your confidence built up so that you're ready and you're kind of willing to start doing this. So, you know, if you do get a call or an invitation and someone wants to visit you or whatever, definitely say yes, even if you're busy. Um, I'm seeing a lot of positive energy and a lot of comfort coming to you around this visit. And if this if there isn't an invitation, you know, call someone up that you feel comfortable with, even if it's a friend, even if it's just one person, just sit around their house and just, you know, have a cup of coffee and just relax with them and talk to them. Go somewhere where you feel relaxed and nurtured and that will help to build yourself up again. 